Well, we got the plumbing going in, so right now we need to dig a hole and drop some cisterns. So we got this baby, the uh, Bobcat E42 mini excavator. I'll see if I can figure it out. So I threw my back out and I, my back works fine. I can walk and I can do a lot of things, but I can't sit for long periods of time. I can't even sit for short periods of time. So Danielle- it's just a big excuse to get out of work. <laughs> So Danielle, don't worry, she watched a video on YouTube. So yeah. she's she's an expert now. So she's normally driving horses. Now she's got a little bit different horsepower here and she's gonna try to figure this out. So we're gonna put her on time-lapse. And do you have any last words, honey? If he says a single negative word, he and his back can do it. No, 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 I love you, honey, and you'll do great. <laughs> don't worry about it. You just, just fire that thing up and just start pushing levers. Uh, I watched a video, we'll see how this goes. All right, crank it up. It says it's supposed to just start. Things are going pretty good. She's learning it. <laughs> Trying to dig a gray water pit here. We've got nothing but crickets out here. Oh, I'm stiff. <laughs> Driving horses and he's a lot easier than this. Well, we got somewhat of a hole here, day one. Oh, we got two holes. We got a trench for the gray water system over here. It's hard to see. And that's, uh, there's a pit down there for that. And then there's the hole for the cistern here. And uh, we're making progress. Day good. one, and we have tomorrow to finish. I did as much of that hole as I could last night before it started getting dark. And the whole time I was working, I noticed Sean pacing around, acting busy, and I suspected he just just dying to drive that thing. So I wake up this morning, sure enough, back or not, uh, he's driving, and I'm totally okay with that. I like my horses better. So we'll see how long he lasts, but uh, he can't resist a, a good engine. Safe. Break time? Uh, yeah, break time, and it looks like the little girl wants to join me. So um, I see your back must not be as painful today. You, uh, you hijacked it. I'm in severe pain, but I, I felt bad for my wife. I know she likes horses much better than power equipment. I, so. I admit, I, I think my horses are safer. Man, this thing will throw you. It's got some power and I don't uh, like it. I, yeah, you gotta go really slow because it'll flip over. I don't like it. So Kyla, are you gonna go for a ride now? Mm-hmm. All right, jump up there. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I don't think she's ever been in a big piece of equipment. Yes, All right, have fun. You wanna operate the bucket? <laughs> Grab this thing right here. Okay, push it. Okay, push it that way. Okay. Now grab this thing here. Daddy. Oh, yeah. 
so why do you have a pickaxe after you rented a mini excavator? Well, I've got to actually make it a flat bottom. I'm not very good with an excavator and it didn't have very long reach. So I just had to dig deep and now I'm going to have to level the whole thing by hand and then fill it with rock. Right. How's that back doing? Oh, it's fine. It's easy to work. It's hard to sit down. Sitting down is what hurts my back. So we're trying to make sure this uh, deck down here where the cisterns are going to sit is perfectly level, but I still have to put rock in it. So right now I'm trying to get it roughly level, but I want the uh, elevation to be correct. Uh, my goal is to have it 96 inches below the surface, which is behind us because this this terrain slopes down. So what I've done is I've set a laser up behind the camera and I'm shooting from level there back to here. And I've taken a piece of PVC and I've marked it from 92 to 100 inches. And as I move this around right now, the laser is falling on 98 inches, okay? So um, essentially I'm gonna move some of this dirt around. I'm gonna bring the laser down here now and I'm gonna level this area here. So when the rock is shot, I'll do the same thing. But it's gonna be an iterative process to make sure when they drop those tanks, I'm sitting at the level I wanna be. And the level I'm shooting for is uh, to put the caps of the second cistern we may put in later at ground level up there. So these aren't sticking out too high and it's not too low. The other thing I wanna concern myself is, how, what is the level of the water compared to the level of the pump? I bought a booster pump and you're not supposed to have more than 10 feet of suction lift. What I'm doing is actually setting it about 17 inches above the basement floor. The pump is going to be about 12 inches above the basement floor. So I should essentially have zero lift. In fact, I should have about five inches of drop from the bottom level of the cistern uh, to the pump. So if the cistern's up here, I've got about eight feet of drop, seven feet of drop. So that's going to help my pump out because it's not wasting energy lifting water. It's only using energy to pressurize the pressure tank. And that's a way to really save some, some energy by not having to pump water uphill. So this hole was pretty hard to dig because first of all, it has to be 12 by 16 feet so those tanks can fit in here and the workers have room to move things around. Uh, the other thing is this clay is extremely hard. Uh, when our builder was doing the house, he said that's the hardest clay he's ever run into. The excavator had a lot of trouble getting through this. And we tried to shave the wall, tried to shave it, and tried to shave it. And there are pockets. This pocket right here, this, this lighter color here, is extremely hard. And it's got rocks on the inside of it. In fact, it's so hard, um, as you can see, you can't get a shovel into there. Uh, it actually broke one of the teeth off of the excavator. I had to call the rental company and he said, that's no problem, they can replace those. They're, they're made that way. But it broke a tooth off and nearly broke a second tooth off trying to get through this stuff. So instead of just finishing up by digging, I had to actually use a pickaxe and chip away at the wall. So it was a tremendous amount of work. And if you look at the time lapse, you'll see I'm down here a long time and it doesn't seem like I get much done. And it's because it took several hours to get through just a very small section of this really hard clay. Okay, now I've taken that laser and I've put it on a board down here in the middle of the pit. So it was a board on there and it was on a board down here. So the reference is the same. It has dropped down 98 inches from where it was okay then i go around and i mark the lines on the side of the pit using the laser and this gives me my reference point from which i can begin to level and quite honestly i did it by eye earlier and i was pretty darn close <laughs> i mean i was within a couple inches of, uh, of level, and I, and I did cheat a little bit. I had a string up there that, that gave me a reference early on, but I didn't really measure it accurately until today. So I don't have a whole lot of work to do down here, and I'm gonna call the rock guy in and fill it up to that orange level, and that will give me my, um, the elevation that I want.
it looks like we've got a large truck coming. <laughs> we heard it coming down the driveway and I think he stopped at the end because he was a little nervous about uh, driving into our driveway. Most big trucks are. So we'll see if he uh, heads up the driveway here. He's creeping along. You can tell that he's real nervous about coming in the driveway. Hopefully when he gets around the corner and sees the opening, he'll come up. I try to tell everybody on the message that it's okay. You can come back here and it'll open up on you. All right, these are the cisterns. They're coming down the road now. All right, I'm gonna sign off for here. Just so you know what's going on here, uh, he had the two tanks on separate trailers. So he dropped that trailer over there. He's gonna unload this one, then go pick up the other one and get it in the hole. That's quite a crane there. He says it extends out the side or the back of the truck. I was hoping it was the back because they backed up right to the hole essentially. So we'll see if we can get those straight down there. I'm sure the perfect uh, setting in there had something uh, to do with it. It's about a quarter inch high back here. You want to reach it? <laughs> hey, I'm pretty happy with that. It'll just help all the silt flow to one end so you can clean it easier, that's right? right? That's right. You know, it's interesting. I didn't look closely at the drawings on the inside. I was looking at the outside to get the dimensions. But they've got knockout ports on either side for overflow so that you don't... Uh, uh, overflow through the top and they also have a uh, support structure here for this roof this roof it looks to be about uh, four inch concrete it's four inches of concrete but there's some support structures that actually come out on both ends to probably support more weight for the top so it's a very well made cistern I'm very impressed with it and uh, they've already set uh, an intake I'm sorry an outlet this is an outlet this is where the pipe and the foot valve are going to go on the inside. And then over here is the interconnect between the two tanks. So it's already um, precast with a hole and then they seal it and put a brass fitting there. So when you connect the two tanks, you have a sealed uh, joint down there, which is very important. So I'm really excited about this. I'm most excited that it's level. <laughs> Right, a quick check on my leveling here the uh, the laser is up the hill where I sighted it before and the the ground level is actually three inches below the laser is three inches tall so as it sits on the ground up the hill up there it's hard to see but that's the level of where the front of the other cisterns will be so three inches below that laser dot is the ground level up there. So the lid is going to basically sit right at ground level up there, slightly above ground level down here. So we did well on the depth. Well, praise God, we got these cisterns in. It's been cold at night. It's been in the upper 30s and we're gonna hit a freeze here soon. We're in October. Those tanks outside aren't gonna work for us anymore. So I still have a lot of work to do. I've got to backfill this hole. I'm very happy with the design of these cisterns. They are designed specifically to be cisterns. They're not septic tanks or anything. There's an interconnecting line down to the bottom that connects the two tanks. These are nice caps too because the aeration for the tank is in the cap, whereas my old cisterns had separate pipes coming out for aeration, so I really like this design. We're looking forward to getting this hooked up and getting water into the house and maybe taking a shower inside. <laughs> well, the cisterns are all in and backfilled. The plumber's still working in the house. Next on the agenda is the propane so we can have hot water and not just water. Thanks for tuning in. Leave your comments. We love to read them. And if you haven't subscribed, join us on our journey.